Today, I'm going to be installing this wall thimble. Yes, you heard that right. It's a thimble for a wall. Essentially, it is a passageway with an air gap in it for insulation purposes to pass a chimney pipe or a stove pipe, if you will, through a wall and reduce the risk of a fire due to heat. So yes, it is called a wall thimble and I'm about to show you how to do it. The first thing you wanna be certain of is that the wall you're about to pass the thimble through, A, doesn't have any wires in it, okay? Wires and a drill don't mix. Two, that you use a stud finder. Yes, this is a Ryobi, you can laugh now. <laughs> a stud finder to find your studs. If you don't want to pass your whole saw through a stud. Now I have already located mine, but for the purposes of this video, I told you I'd show you how. So A, no wires. B, where's your studs, okay? All right, so we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna put this on the wall. All right, we're gonna fire it up, wait for it to go ahead and be ready to find a stud and we're gonna move it until we see it go solid green for a stud. And when the light comes on all the bars, right there's your stud. And some of these stud finders have a pin, a pin marker here. You can push that right there and put a pin mark in your sheetrock. Then we're gonna move it this direction. And this building is on two foot center, so it should be about 24 inches over. We should see more green lights. There we go. And pin mark it. Now you can take those two pin marks and divide by, take the distance between those two and divide by two. In this case, it's a 24 inch span between the pin marks. And the center of that is where you're gonna to wanna to put your center bit on your hole saw. This is a seven inch hole saw. Yes, you heard me right. The thimble is seven inches in diameter. And so that pilot bit in the center is gonna go in the dead center of the pin marks we made. And uh, I got this thing off of Amazon and uh, it was probably one third the cost of the uh, ones in Home Depot. Of course, the ones in Home Depot are Milwaukee and Diablo, so they're better quality, but this is a one-time use for me. I've got it chucked up to a heavy duty drill. Now this first layer we're going through is sheetrock. So be careful once you've drilled your sheetrock out to stop and pull the insulation out so you are ready to go to the next layer, which is the outside wall. And we'll take this nice and slow. And you can see it torques really hard if you get it, you get the angle off, so you gotta take it easy. Also, it never hurts to go ahead and test fit your thimble after you drilled your hole to see if it fits. Looks like this one will with just a little bit of extra trimming. Don't just throw this, this pink stuff away because you're gonna to need to stuff it in around the, the thimble when you're done. Also, wear protective gear when you're pulling this pink stuff out. Um, I don't recommend you doing this without proper protection, so just, yeah. Right here, do as I say, not as I do. This stuff will make you itch. Boy, you can feel the heat, how much this insulation is protecting the air conditioning in this building. Wow, that's impressive. All right, now that we've got our hole cleaned out, I'm gonna go ahead and shave a little bit off here with my knife. Because remember our thimble just barely didn't fit. Then we'll take my knife, I'm gonna wring out the hole just a hair more. Not a lot. There we go. Now we're ready for the more dangerous part, which is to put that hole saw through that hole and punch through the sheathing in the exterior siding.
That's a good saw. You know what? I don't even think I've dulled the blades any. So yeah, I'd say if you're looking for a bargain hole saw, this is the one. It's called a Lofizy. It's an Amazon bargain buy. Yeah, give it a shot. Here is an up close of the hole we just drilled. And you can see I've got to go outside now and cut the metal siding. Uh, there's a number, number of reasons I'm going to cut it with a pair of shears and not with the blade. Uh, when I cut with the blade, if, especially if it's metal siding, it'll make sparks. And on a hot day like today, and you can see it's a wood underlayment, sparks are dangerous. So uh, uh, I'm not going to cut this past that metal. I'm going to go out there with a pair of metal shears and finish cutting it. Okay, we've got that sheet metal cut on the outside. That was a hot job because it is over 100 degrees outside right now, I believe. But you can see there is the metal siding on my building. And then there is the wrap. There is the under sheathing. There is a rare look inside the pink batting. So now we've got that punch through. We've got the metal cut through outside. Yes, that is a cool old Ford over there. I don't think it's for sale though. We're gonna go ahead and put the interior piece of the thimble in. Since the interior section of the wall thimble is going into sheetrock, we need to make some marks where our wall anchors are gonna go. To do this, you can use a tiny drill bit and a level. So we're gonna fit this in the hole. And we're gonna push it flush against the wall, like that. And set a level on top of it, because even though this is not absolutely necessary, when people walk into your business or your home, you don't wanna make it look like Homer Simpson built your house. You might be a Homer Simpson, but don't make a house that looks like one. And we'll just take this drill bit, we'll make a mark, In all three spots. Did I say three? Four spots. All right. And then we remove the thimble and install our anchors. I'm using these. Um, I'm using these easy anchor drywall anchors, and uh, yeah, that should hold it in there nicely. Feel the heat in this Arkansas summer day coming in that hole. Whew. Making me sweat. Remember, this is really thin metal, so you don't have to put the hurt on it. what you saw here on the inside outside by putting the other piece on I'm using the Duravent four inch double walled insulated exhaust system it's as simple as threading the exhaust pipe through the thimble of course on the other end we're gonna caulk it and make sure it's good and sealed there we go we're in the hole and then Duravent gives you this nifty bracket that slides up and mounts to the wall to give you the proper distance away from the wall for fire protection. So we're probably gonna be right about there. And then we will go ahead and torque this bracket in place and we will be ready to mount it. This is just a flat blade screw in this clamp. And we pinch these two together All the nut. I'm sorry my arm is in the way blocking your view. I'll show you here in just a second. There we go. We are going to use a level, of course, to make sure our pipe is level. check level this way see how we're looking all right so the exhaust stack needs to come 
this way. Spot on. Let's go outside and put the cap on. This is what we're looking at out back, and this cap locks onto that end sticking out right there. And this is the finished product. So you can see the thimble on the other side is a galvanized, and it's just a matching cap to the other end that we placed on the sheetrock inside. Now all that's left to do is caulk all around the pipe on the inside here and on the outside, outside the building. I hope this video has helped someone. If you're installing a stove pipe uh, before this winter, or if you're trying to open a business where you need exhaust, uh, now at least you have the basics of how to install a wall thimble. Thanks again for watching. Y'all have a blessed day.